Hallo. Guten Tag. My name is Elisa. And I'm Rodrigo. And this is our video for Deutsche Welle Travel here in Berlin. Today we will walk around and show you how to spend 24 hours in the German capital city. Hopefully we will give you some ideas if you're planning on visiting Berlin. And if you are planning to visit Berlin, you need to plan for the weather. As you can see, today we have a beautiful January weather. But the Germans always say that there's no such thing as a bad weather. There's bad clothes. But we are well dressed for the weather, so yeah. we can do it. We sure are prepared for the 24 hours. And to start it properly, we are going to have a nice breakfast. Just to fill up and have some energy for our day exploring the city. Now we are in front of the Reichstag building, the German parliament, and it might seem like an unusual place to have breakfast, but you'll see what we mean very, very soon. You probably know that you can go up there and see the view. It's a free uh, visitation. You can just make a reservation and go there. Maybe you don't know that you can eat up there too. So that's what we are going to do today. Yeah. And regardless if you're going to eat or not, you need to have a reservation to go up there and mm -hmm. you need to have an ID with a picture of you so you can go through security. So the start of the day, we can have this wonderful breakfast. It's a complete breakfast for both of us. And we are surrounded by the views of the city of Berlin. That's very inspiring for the day ahead. We can already see the places we are going to visit very soon. But first, let's enjoy. Now we have our bellies full, we can walk around the parliament. We don't have to have a second reservation for the parliament. We can be here at the cafe and then go to the parliament. Uh, the opposite is not possible. As far as I know, you cannot go to the parliament and then decide to have a coffee here. You have to have a separate uh, reservation for this. But it's a life hack. If you try to enter the parliament and there's no more free slots, you can try and see if there are some free slots here on the cafe. So you have to check and see, but it is possible. Now we are going to walk around the, the dome and the, the platform. It's a beautiful day, so come with us. After the German reunification, this building was under major reconstruction until 1999, when the German Bundestag restarted work in Berlin with their Reichstag building as its seat once more. Today, members of the public can visit the roof terrace and the glass dome that represents the transparency of the German government. The view here is 360 degrees around Berlin, so you can see very far away in good conditions. Today is not the ideal condition to see like very further away, but still you can see the Tiergarten, you can see the TV tower kind of lost in the clouds, but it's a really Really awesome place and uh, since it's uh, completely free it's a beautiful way to start a day another thing that's really cool is that you can have a free audio guy and you can get it as soon as you get out of the lift and there's many languages including English so that's very convenient and as you go up this beautiful glass dome of the Reichstag, you hear about your surroundings, you hear about the construction, about the history of the place, so it's completely worth it. It's a very cool thing to do. In a beautiful day like this, a big advantage we have is that we have Berlin all for ourselves, basically. So we can walk around, there's no one around, there's only wind and, and rain. It's something positive we can take away from this nice weather. Now we are on the station of Unter den Linden. We just got the U-Bahn here and this is actually a new station. It was finished in 2020 and there's a couple of new stations as well going onwards to Alexanderplatz that are very, very convenient for a tourist because it really goes through the city center of Berlin, through the main attractions. And if you are unlucky as us with the weather, you can take the U-Bahn and see all the main attractions on the street without having to deal with the weather. Yeah. But we are going to deal with the weather so you can see the city. So. Let's go. Today 
to give you some context, the Unter den Linden name comes from these trees, so the Linden trees. We are under the Linden trees. And this boulevard was developed by Friedrich II, he's, he's just behind me on his horse, and he actually invested a lot on making Berlin more beautiful, more developed, to bring it up to scale to, for example, like Paris or London, that were the real references back then. Walking around Unter den Linden is super easy to lose yourself looking around all these beautiful buildings. We have palaces, we have the cathedral, we have museums, we have a lot of beautiful buildings. But usually I recommend that you don't look just up, you should look down a little bit too, especially here where we are. Right here by the gates of the university we can see a lot of stumbling stones. They are part of a memorial to remember the victims of Nazi persecution. Most stones look back on the Jewish people persecuted during Hitler's regime, but we also have some in honor of all the other groups of people who were tyrannized by the regime. And here we try to remember each one of them as individual people, so the plates are inscribed with the name and life dates of victims of Nazi extermination or persecution. Today the stumbling stones are all over Europe and around 8,000 of them are here in Berlin. You should take a moment to read about those lives and remember them. Crossing the street to reach Bebelplatz and this is another place to look down and check the memorial for the burnt books. In the middle of this square on May 10, 1933, Nazi students burnt upwards of 20,000 books with the works of hundreds of independent authors, journalists, philosophers and academics as they were considered quote-unquote un-German. Symbolically, the underground bookshelves have space for around 20,000 books as a reminder of the 20,000 books that went up in flames here. And we also have a plate here on the ground with a very important quote wrote by German Jewish poet Heinrich Heine in 1820. He said, that was but a prelude where they burn books, they will ultimately burn people as well. And he said that more than a hundred years before the Nazis, he was not uh, trying to see the future, he was just analyzing human behavior and he was completely right, unfortunately. Now we arrived here on the Museum Island and this place is called the Museum Island because it is an island with a lot of museums. So we have a lot of options here to see some exhibitions. Right now we are right in front of the Altes Museum, the, the old museum. We have the German Historical Museum, we have the palace, we have the cathedral over there. Some people say that there are more museums here in Berlin and actually rainy days in Berlin. So if the weather is being tough on you, if it's raining a lot, if it's too cold for example, you can really explore the options of the museums in the city. I really like, for example, the video game museum. I find it very fascinating. The Jewish Historical Museum is amazing to check it out. And they are not here in the Museum Island. They are spread out through the city. So there's a lot of options to explore. So now we went down the River Spree and we are in an area that represents a Berlin that's not so well known, it's the medieval Berlin. Here is the birthplace of Berlin, it's called Nikolai Viertel. The city was founded here. We can actually see the monument to that over there, so there is the heart of Berlin. Berlin starts from there. We are going to take you on a walk around this uh, region so you can see a little bit of the medieval part of the history that's not very common, people don't talk about it that much I think. Everyone only talks about the Prussians and the wars and the emperors. Unfortunately, this place is not really original anymore. The passage of time and the war destroyed almost everything. We are going to show you the surviving parts, but we can just imagine right now how it was in the medieval ages. True, and also we are in the middle of the day, we're starting to get a little bit hungry, and fortunately there's a lot of options here in this area. Since we are here on the Nikolai Quartier, where Berlin actually started in the 13th century, we decided to find out what's traditional Berlin food. So we came to one of the many restaurants we have here on this neighborhood, and we already got some uh, beverages here. Yeah, I got a black beer, that's a very traditional thing. And Lisa here got um, strawberry wine. Yeah, that's very different i guess i never saw this before this is a strawberry wine made with strawberries from the region so it's very different it tastes like wine and like strawberries it's amazing <laughs> to eat we have a lot of options many of them are like pork and potatoes and sauerkraut we have our first dish here this is a starter it's a barley soup so here in germany you can have beer 
and soup made out of barley. And it's actually very cold outside, so it's a, a good choice, I guess. And this soup has not only barley, it has prunes, which is kind of weird, different. I don't know if this is very traditional, but here we are. This is the vegetarian option, so let's try and see if it's good. It's good. I have a Prussian platter here, so I have two kinds of sausages and uh, pork belly. And we also have half a duck, that's a very traditionally German thing to eat. So we recommend you try it if you have the opportunity. And since we are showing some alternative spots uh, here in Berlin, I would like to show you the smallest street of Berlin. The eggs alley, where they used to sell eggs on the market. And it's only 16 meters long. So here's a small curiosity about Berlin. Now that we had lunch, we can continue our journey through Berlin. And usually when we are walking around new cities, we are going to see places that are very famous, right? Yep. But sometimes there's a lot of nice and interesting things around these very famous places. And that's the case right here. You can see Alexanderplatz right over there with the TV tower. I believe it's the most famous place here in Berlin. Yep. Maybe the second together with the Brandenburger Tor. And here we are one block away from Alexanderplatz. And you can see this building here, that's an old medieval monastery. And this building was made in the 13th century, just as the place we were before. But unfortunately, it was destroyed during the Second World War. My favorite thing about this place here is actually the juxtaposition between this medieval building and the TV tower. You can see it between the multiple windows around the monastery and then it's a very nice uh, photo opportunity place for you to enjoy. And there's also another very old piece of Berlin just around the corner, so let's check it out. So we walked around like 30 meters from the monastery, I can still see it there. And here is the piece of the original medieval wall that surrounded Berlin. It was a very common thing, of course, for medieval cities to have a wall around them and Berlin was no different. So I can see here that the construction started in 1250 and continued until the 14th century. And it's very interesting to see these kind of things because you can really see how old Berlin really is. Because usually when you think Berlin, you think of the 19th century, the, tw the 20th century, but so much more happened before that. It's very normal to want to see the city from above when you are visiting a new place. And here in Berlin, usually people want to go to the TV tower to see the city from more than 300 meters above the ground. But we have a different idea. Here on Alexanderplatz, we have this building over here. And one of the biggest advantages of this building is that you only pay six euros to go up there. And in the TV tower is 20 plus euros. So it makes sense, at least for me. Also, you can see the city with the TV tower if you go up this building. If you go up the TV tower, you don't see the TV tower with the city. So for me, it doesn't make any sense because the TV tower is one of the most iconic buildings here in Berlin probably the most iconic. All right, guys, we made it. We are here. The view is amazing. Every time I come here, I'm just in love again. So I recommend this place from the bottom of my heart. It's super cool. There's only one thing that I feel like I need to share with you. And that is the fact that this place is not very accessible. You need to use the lift until the 35th floor, but then you have to climb five floors of stairs. So that's not very accessible. But if you can come here, it's very cool. The view is amazing. I love it. I'm gonna enjoy a little bit more. One recommendation that I always like to share is that you visit these kind of vantage points after you already did some walking and that you understand the city around you. So when you look down to it, you know which buildings are which, you know where you have been before, and that's super interesting to see. We were just up there and seeing the city 
from above, we felt like we needed to take a walk after lunch. So we decided to walk here. And we are right now in Kalmaxale. This boulevard was built during the GDR years. So I'm sure we are going to see very interesting buildings and architecture here. As the quote-unquote first socialist street on German soil, Stalin Alley, as it was called until 1961, was built to house workers of the GDR, shops, restaurants, and cultural places like the movie theater Kino Internacional, still open today. This is a super cool place to visit because it's a different historical moment that you can analyze through the architecture. We can see here without context, maybe you think I'm in Moscow, but I'm still in Berlin. Because you need to understand that Berlin was divided in two during the Cold War, right? So the different sizes of Berlin reconstructed the city using their different references. So this whole street has buildings with a distinct Soviet style that is very similar to the ones you can see in Moscow. We walked all the way from Alexanderplatz to here in Frankfurt Tor, and now we are very tired and hungry again. <laughs> so we are going to eat and as you can see now it's night-ish, it's almost night. So we are going to Friedrichshain to see a lot of bars and restaurants and stuff like that. Come with us. We usually keep it very casual on our nights out. We like to check the neighborhoods of Kreuzberg or Friedrichshain and just go to our local Spätis, that's a basically a convenience store, and grab a fresh drink over there. We also like to eat on the streets, some of the street foods that you can find around Berlin, but often we also check restaurants to see what's new and to try some new cuisines. If you're more on the wild side, Berlin will not disappoint. It is one of the capitals of the club culture of the world and there's plenty to check around Friedrichshain. So after a long day we get very hungry and usually I go for a doner kebab, that's my favorite. But today we, uh, we went for a shawarma and it's pretty good, I already had a bite, let's have another one. We just ate close to Boxhagener Platz and we walked a little bit and now we are here in the east side gallery we couldn't finish this video without showing you <laughs> the east side gallery is very important and it's a very good place to finish this video because now we are here it's like properly night and it's a very good place to start the night if you want to so this video is 24 hours in berlin <laughs> and you can go from here to either kreuzberg or friedrichshain it's very close by and you can go to many many nightclubs here in Berlin. It's true we started in Friedrichshain that's where we had our, uh, our dinner but uh, if you want to explore even more to Kreuzberg there's a lot of options for other places to have a beer or to go for dancing it's uh, really a vast world of the Berlin night. It's interesting because this wall used to separate Berlin in two right it used to separate these two districts and now they are united and you can have fun on either of them so that's uh, very beautiful. <laughs> if you like a street art if you like history you should come here if you have the opportunity here we have 1.3 kilometers of art like an open air gallery so you shouldn't miss and with that we say bye bye we hope you like this video if you like it give, give it, it a, a like. like and subscribe to Deutsche Welle Travel see you next time Tschüss.